Glory to God. I hope you all can say that this morning in faith. It is well. Praise God. In Jesus, everything's good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you for being with us this morning. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. We appreciate it so much. Amen. Great to, to get together any way that we can. Praise the Lord. And so may the Lord bless you today. Hallelujah. With his presence, with great faith. Amen. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. So thank you again for being with us. I want to thank uh, Mike and Suzanne again, as always, for everything that they're doing, not only today at, in the service itself and running the technological uh, aspect of all of this, which is basically all that we have. So praise the Lord. They are, uh, what is the word that we're using now? Necessities. They are needed. Essential. Praise the Lord. Essential. That's the big word I was looking for. Thank you, Suzanne. So praise the Lord, we, we are grateful for, for Mike and Suzanne and all the hard work that they put into it. And believe me, they are. Throughout the week, they're doing things, trying to upgrade and make uh, connections and uh, keep up with everything. In fact, they've been uh, going after hand sanitizers and cleansing and products and everything else as well as doing the other stuff. So uh, they've been a real blessing to all of us, whether you realize it or not. Certainly for me, they've been a tremendous blessing. So praise the Lord and continue to bless them. And for everybody else, I just wanted to mention this morning, we've been discussing this, and I've talked to a few people, uh, either by text message or what have you, and, and some have uh, contacted Sally through uh, Facebook and that, and we're talking with Suzanne and Mike, and I think we're going to, our, our intention is to, to try to come back uh, in a structured manner, amen, according to all the guidelines that the government is putting out and the health organizations, which are only right, uh, I, we're going to shoot for the 17th of May. Now, that's not locked in stone at this point, but that's what we're hoping for. That'll be uh, two weeks from today. And uh, that would put us at just past the initial uh, kind of opening up of things in the state of Iowa. Uh, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, things continue to progress, uh, and we'll just trust the Lord for his leading. I know some people may be thinking, well, come on, Nathan, you're always talking about faith. Well, I do believe in faith. I do believe that God heals. I do believe that God protects us. But there are some times that we need to use common sense as well as the Word of God. And in fact, there isn't any contradiction usually uh, in terms of the spiritual side of this thing. But let me just, uh, the reason I'm saying this, uh, I, in prayer this week, and I, I know it's been kind of troubling for others as well, because I've talked to Suzanne and Mike about it, and they've been kind of struggling with the same idea. We want to do this. We want to open it up and get everybody back. But at the same time, we want to do it in a way that is safe for everybody. And we have people with pre-existing conditions. We have elderly people. And we have young people. And we have everything in between. So we're trying to uh, do what is wise as well as what is uh, wanted. Amen. And so uh, the Lord just spoke to me this. You know, remember when Jesus was uh, had just been baptized and then he was taken out or went out into the desert and fasted and the enemy came the devil came to him and he said if you're the son of man in other words he's trying to say prove me show me your faith right uh, turn these stones into bread or jump off the side of the temple now Jesus wasn't dumb enough to do it just to prove that God could protect him God can protect us amen but God expects us to use some common sense amen as well and so that's why I'm saying let's hold off let's wait until the 17th Give us a little bit more time to see how this thing is going forward and uh, feel a, a witness in the Holy Spirit that this is a time to come back and a time to start back up. In the meantime, we have this avenue to, to reach out to one another and, and to connect. And so with that in mind, I think the safest thing is to we'll just put off uh, opening back up the church until the 17th at the earliest. And we'll see uh, going forward, as I said, how that works out. But I have a sense of responsibility, you know, that, and I don't get into all this stuff a lot, but... The shepherd, you know, I'm supposed to be the shepherd of this flock. And the shepherd has a responsibility to the sheep, you know, and to not let them go into dangerous places and not put them into, uh, you know, situations that could be uh, negative. So that's my feeling about it. I'm not trying to boost myself up as anything other than just I don't want to be responsible for anybody's pain, suffering, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I think we're doing the right thing this way. And here's just let me just give you these two. I'm sure you've all heard them a million times. But going forward, this is what we're going to be looking at, at least for the immediate future. And that is social distancing. You know, that's six foot. Sanitizing, uh, hand sanitizing all on a regular basis. 
uh, washing your hands obviously as well. We're going to have to be cleaning pews and so Suzanne and Mike and I are going to do that and then we're going to put separation between them. Families can set with families but we have to keep our six foot uh, from everybody else. Amen. And so face masks are optional they say. If you have them you can wear them. Uh, you don't have to but uh, they are an option. Uh, we have to, as I said, cleaning the pews, cleaning doorknobs, anything that gets touched, you know, has to be deep cleaned afterwards. And anybody with a high risk, uh, stay home. I mean, we want you here, but we don't want you to be at risk either. So if you have a pre-existing condition, if you're a high risk individual, for whatever reason, stay home. If you feel ill, stay home, no matter what kind of illness you're feeling, because everybody's symptoms are, are a little bit different. They're not all identical. So we need to stay home if we're feeling ill. And if you have contacted anybody or been in contact with anybody who has been uh, diagnosed as having COVID-19, uh, then you need to stay home as well. Seek your physician, get with your physician, see if you can be tested, uh, but don't be out mixing with other people for at least the two week period that they have set in place, okay? So thank the Lord. Uh, I know I just told you what you've heard 20 times a day at least, amen. But we need to all be aware of this. And again, moving forward, I think we can do this. It's just we want to do it in a way that's safe for everybody. And so that there isn't a lot of anxiety involved. We want to come and worship the Lord and be together as much as we can be. But we want to do it in a safe and, and uh, sane manner. Okay? So praise the Lord. That's all of that. And uh, I hope you all are on the same page with us. We're just trying to be safe. We don't want to take chances. We don't want to see anybody so far. The church body is doing great. We haven't had any major issues with uh, people in the congregation, so we want to keep it that way, and we don't want to uh, exaggerate the already existing problems. Amen? So God bless you again. Thank you for your patience. Hang in there. Keep praying and believe in God. We're going to get to the other side of this soon. Amen? In Jesus' name. So, now on a lighter note, or maybe not, depending on who's listening, how many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Tentacles. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm feeling it right now. I'm feeling it. You're, you're with me, right? Praise the Lord. Sad news is there was a cartoonist found dead at his home yesterday, and the details are still sketchy, so. <laughs> well, back to the animals. Anybody know why Dumbo was always so sad? Well, he felt irrelevant. Well, on a historic note, tell me how Rome was divided. By a pair of Caesars. <laughs> it's hard even for me sometimes to do these. You know, I don't trust stairs at all because they're always up to something. Praise God. Thank you for your patience. Praise God. Amen. God's going to reward you for this, I promise. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go to the Word of God this morning. God bless you all. Let's, let's get in sync with uh, what God is saying to us today. And uh, we'll do that by beginning with the Word of God. I've got several scriptures here, kind of, as usual, trying to find my way through all of this. But let's begin with Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Revelation 1, verses 1 through 3. And God bless all of you again. Thank you for being here with us. We appreciate it so much and uh, just can't wait for the time that we can actually be physically together. But this is better than not having any connections whatsoever. So it's a good thing. Praise the Lord. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now let me just say this to begin with. First, I do believe we're in the end times. But Sally and I had this conversation the other day too, and one of the things you see every time there's a crisis of any kind like this, whether it was 9-11 or this particular thing or, or, or other issues that have come up uh, over the years, people immediately go to the book of Revelation and start looking for you know, the horror shows that's going to take place. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But let me just say this. I know there's a lot of stuff in there, and I'm not going to teach Revelation this morning. But I do want us to keep in mind 
This book of Revelation is about the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not about the end of the world. It's not about chaos. and conf I mean, there's crap going to happen for sure. But our focus is supposed to be drawn to Jesus and not to all the other stuff that's going on there. Amen? It's a perfect example of all the chaos that goes on in the world and where are we supposed to be focused? On Jesus, not on the stuff. We're looking at the things that are not seen as though they are and the things that are as though they're not. So uh, keep that in mind when you get to hearing all this stuff about the end of the world and all that's happening. Just remember, our focus is Jesus. If we make him the revelation, he takes care of all the other stuff. Amen? We know the end of this deal. We're good. Praise the Lord. So we just need to keep our focus on the one who has declared us righteous. Amen? And kept us, amen, from all evil. Amen? It is well with him. Amen? So, with that in mind, let's look at Luke chapter 11 and verse 28 now. Luke 11, 28. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. We could repeat that. He said, Rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Praise the Lord. Romans 13, 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Praise the Lord. How many of you can say that? Just chronologically, just by years. Uh, our salvation is closer today than it was the day you originally believed in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right? Amen. Paul said it was the last days even when he was there on earth. Praise the Lord. Now part of that is this. Part of that is not talking about the last days of the world. He's talking about the last days of the influence of the law. Praise the Lord. Uh, you can, it's the end of the age it is used as uh, in, in many cases. But they're still talking about the age of the law or the age of how God was dealing covenantly with his people. Those days are over. We are past the last days of that. We are into the days of a new covenant. Praise the Lord. So look at Romans with me. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Romans 5, 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. That, that'll make you hiccup right there, won't it? Praise the Lord. She's saying, well, speak for yourself, Nathan. No, I'm saying, patience, experience, and experience hope. Praise the Lord. And hope makes not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Praise the Lord. It is finished. Our situation, our condition, as far as God is concerned, it's done. Praise the Lord. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. No weapon formed against us can prosper. This is a finished work. That's, what we're, that's where we're at. Amen. And that's where our attention and our focus needs to be. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Praise the Lord. Chapter 3, verse 24. Still Galatians, but chapter 3 and verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Praise the Lord. Matthew 12, 34 through 37. Matthew 12, 34 through 37. Praise the Lord. Now we'll get into this. Thank you, Jesus. O generation of vipers, how can you being evil, speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Praise the Lord. Now, in Matthew where we're reading this last scripture, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And he's talking to them for speaking hypocritically. Amen. He tells them, Jesus tells them to look at their own hearts 
because it's out of their heart or the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. All right. So look again here at verse 36 and 37. He says, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. So words are important. Idle words are, there's no such thing really as idle words, obviously, because if, if we're going to be accountable for the idle words, right, just for just common conversation, right? For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. So what we're seeing in Scripture is that we are justified by faith and we are justified by our words. Praise the Lord. So here's the deal. How, how do these justifications relate to each other in our lives personally, right? God is simply showing us in his word the importance of our words being consistent with our faith. Praise the Lord. So we're justified by faith, right? We're justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, it's ironic in a way that we're justified by faith in Jesus Christ, who is the word of God. Now, faith that our faith is in him and that faith is in his shed blood and that it has saved us from wrath that God would deliver to us because if you're not saved, you're under the wrath of God, right? So his shed blood has saved us from the wrath of God through the remission of sin and faith that Jesus Christ paid the full penalty demanded by the law for sin and by that satisfied the righteousness of God forever. Amen? Because of that, we have peace with God, the scripture says. And we stand perfectly righteous before God. I mean, that's as good as it gets. God looks at us right this second, anytime, anywhere, and he sees you perfectly righteous. Praise the Lord. Amen. Perfectly righteous in the sight of God through the blood of Jesus. You say, well, we know that. All right, stay with me. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. I know we say we know that, but do we live like we're really justified? Do we live free of guilt and shame and fear and anxiety and, and uh, payback from an angry God? You should be able to live totally free of any fear. Perfect love casts out fear. God is love. There's no, there's no fear in God. Not, not to the righteous. Not to those that have been born again, right? So therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God. God's not angry. God's not mad. God is wanting us closer and closer to Him. Amen? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14. Hebrews 10, verse 14. For by one offering, He, Jesus, has perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's you and me. Perf perfect. I know, it's hard. You're looking at me and know better. But I'm saying, I am perfect in Christ. You are perfect in Christ. We are sanctified. We are set apart. Amen? God's wrath will never touch us. We'll never know the wrath of God. All we're ever going to know is the love of a loving Father. All we're going to know is the blessing of a God who really loves us just as if we were His only child. Praise the Lord. So we're justified by faith in Jesus. Praise the Lord. And justification by faith determines whether our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Look at this quickly in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. Now here's the deal. Your name is in the book of life. You are written in there as the justified. Amen. Just like Jesus. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Now, they're talking about the Antichrist or the demon spirit, right? The devil. They're going to, everybody, every, everything else on earth is going to worship him, right? Whose names are not written in the book of life. Just the people whose names are not in the book of life are the ones who will submit or give in to the lies of the enemy. Who will submit to the, to the pain, to the suffering, to the whatever it might be out there, right? Who, their names are not written in the book of life of Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Okay? So this justification is based on faith only. Right? Our works have no weight in determining whether our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. 
The only thing that determines whether or not our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life is if we have faith in what He has done for us. If we have believed, we are saved. Amen? So the important thing here is that it's by faith in Jesus Christ that we receive salvation from hell. Amen? Nothing else. Nothing else that we do. Nothing you can say, nothing you can do will add to your salvation in Christ. It's all a work of grace from Him alone. Amen? So now let's look at Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Praise the Lord. Our names are in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Praise the Lord. All right, Hebrews 10, verses 17 and 18. Hebrews 10, 17 and 18. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. There's nothing else that can be done outside of the blood of Jesus to deal with sin. No matter how good you want to behave, no matter how good you try to be, no matter how nice you are, that does not get you into heaven. It does not keep you out of hell. What keeps you out of hell is the blood of Jesus and your faith in that finished work. Amen? We're accepted in God's sight. We are written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise the Lord by faith, just because of what we believe. But there's also a book of words. Amen. Look in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name or his word. Amen? Every time we get together with other believers and we get to talking about what God is doing, and Suzanne and I and Mike were talking about things this morning, just how God was dealing with us, how we were feeling about this thing and that thing and how to move forward, feeling what the Spirit was saying and how it was connecting with each of us. So we're talking about that. And all the time, there's an angel somewhere, a scribe from heaven, and he's making notes. Amen? It happens constantly when we come together and we agree and we talk about the Word of God and the name of God and our faith in that. There's notes being taken. There's things being written in a book. Amen? Praise the Lord. It's a book that's being written that records the words of the righteous as they talk about the Lord, as they think, or when they meditate on the Lord. Amen? And they meditate on His Word. There's... Angelic beings taking notes, writing it down, putting it in the book. Amen. Let's look, look, look at this uh, again. We'll continue reading from 16 on down through chapter 4 and verse 2. This is 316. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before them, or before him, for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name or his word. Praise the Lord. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day, when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Now let's think, and what is that day? That's the end times, that's the last days that many people are freaking about right now. But here's what he says, that when that happens, because of the things that they've said, now I'm going to be there, I'm going to protect them, they're not going to go through this. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves not. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, that, shall, that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you will go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So... When you're hearing the bad and when you're seeing it, and we're, God knows we're hearing it 24 hours a day on every channel, no matter what it is, it's another thing. But remember this. Yes, there is fear out there, but it's the fear of people who do not know God, who do not have the relationship with God, who do not have faith in God, and whose words do not line up with God's word. Praise the Lord. So under him, he, Jesus arrives because we've already got him. But he rises up in us as healing. 
praise the Lord, or deliverance, or whatever it is we need at any given moment, praise God. So, now I want you to notice, in this book of remembrance, it doesn't record the words of the unrighteous. Amen? Only the righteous. Only those that are written in the book of life. Only their words are recorded. Why? Because they're in agreement with the Word of God and who we are based on the Lamb's book of life. So the point I'm trying to make is to illustrate this great importance that God places not only in our faith, but also in our words. We think, well, I can just believe and praise God and then run around and run our mouth about how negative everything is and how bad this is going to be and how negative, you know, what's going to happen to the next person, when's this going to take place and all that. That's not, that's, that's schizophrenic. Your faith is saying one thing and your mouth is saying something else. That's not right. God and His Word are inseparable. They are one. Whatever God's Word says, that's what God is. That's who God is. That's what God believes. That's how God lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. So look at 2 Peter now. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. So I'm, my point is this. Your words are as important as your faith because they are what's describing or releasing that faith into the atmosphere, amen, into the situations and into the circumstances that we're dealing with, amen. So Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. You could, write, you could say that another way. Pay, grace and peace be multiplied to you by your faith in God and in His Word. Praise the Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. How has He given us all those things? By His Word. All things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Amen? That by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, I think I'll, I'll quote a scripture here at some point. I don't remember exactly where it is in my mind here. But remember, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about this, too. When, when Jesus' blood, by his blood and his death, burial, and resurrection, he made a way into the Holy of Holies for all of us. He opened the veil, or he rent the veil in twain that was between God and man. Amen? And Jesus went... But here's the deal. I don't know that I you know, uh, focused on this as much maybe as I should have. But not only, see, it wasn't just that the veil was rent so that we could get into God. The veil was rent so that God could get out to His people. So that God could be revealed, amen, to His people and through His people. Amen? And so it's just as important that we are able to uh, be seated with Him in heavenly places, which is beyond the veil, but it's important that He will never leave us or forsake us as well. He's with us always. Amen? And so the promise, or the Word of God, what Peter's saying is the words that we say ought to line up with the faith that we profess. Amen? Because where there are inconsistencies between faith and words, that's where there is incomplete victory. That is where there is less than total success. That's why Jesus said, I don't say anything but what my Father says. Amen. I'm only going to say that because that's the only way there is consistent victory in the situations that we deal with in life. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when we have faith in Jesus and we then respond to circumstances and situations differently than how unbelievers do. Right. How many of you know you make them uncomfortable? <laughs> Can I get a witness? I mean, have you ever talked about they're, they're going on and on and on about all the bad stuff? And you're saying, praise the Lord. You know, God's going to get us through this. God has healed us. We are already delivered. Amen. We're, we are standing in victory this moment. And they look at you like you are from another planet. Amen. Not knowing that we actually are from somewhere besides here. But nevertheless, we are here, even though we're not of here. And it's obvious that we're not of here when we start having these kind of conversations with people who are of here. Because all it does is upset them. It aggravates them. It makes them uncomfortable. And then what do they do? They persecute, praise the Lord, people that are different than them. Praise God. A lot of the stuff you see in the book of Revelation is just people being people. 
amen, and reacting to the faith of the people of God. They hate it because they don't understand it. They can't get their head around it, right? Let's look at this quickly in Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. So in this world, you'll have persecution. You will if you ever talk about Jesus to anybody. There'll be persecution. In fact, a lot of times it comes from people that are in the church. Because you're Jesus. Their Jesus is too small. I mean, that's the deal, right? And uh, so when, when you point that out in some way, shape, or form, it can create some persecution. Praise the Lord. So to be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So what's, what is he saying here? What he's saying is, when we speak the Word of God, we're sowing the seed. The, the Word is the seed of God, right? It's the Word. So when we sow the Word of God, we're sowing to the Spirit. But when we're talking about... Corona and 19 is going to wipe us all out. And God, there will be nobody left here. And there will only be a little few of them in Micronesia someplace, you know, hiding in a cave or whatever it might be that people are thinking. Amen. That's sowing corruption. That's words that do not agree with God. Amen. That's sowing to the flesh. The natural way of thinking. The sense realm, right? Praise the Lord. So everybody, whether they're a believer or an unbeliever, have to give an account on this earth for their words. On here. Now, I'm not talking about after we go to heaven. I'm talking about right here. There's a, re there, there's a reason for this because God creates everything by His words. We are created in His image. So people operate by this principle whether they understand it or not. Whether they know what it is they're doing. Whether they're sowing corrupt seeds or whether they're sowing good seed. They may not know, but they are whether they know it or not. Praise the Lord. So what well, the scripture says, it rains on the just and the unjust. Crap happens in this world to everybody that's in this world. It's just a question of how we receive it, right? So the rain falls on everybody, but not everybody gets their house flooded. If you're not going to allow the storm to come nigh your dwelling, right, or the, the plague or what have you, right? So there's every man, every woman, every child come under the law of sowing and reaping. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter whether they're an atheist or a priest. It doesn't matter if you're an agnostic or a rabbi. Amen? A, a minister or, a, you know, just a, an unbeliever. It doesn't matter whether they are. They're going to reap what they sow. So it's going to be either a blessing or a curse, depending on what you're sowing. It's the words that proceed from our lives that become planted seed, which will in turn reap a harvest. Praise the Lord. Seed brings blessing or despair, depending on the seed that's sown. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Praise the Lord. So when we fill our hearts and our minds and our mouths with the life-giving substance from the Word of God, it's through the Word of God that we renew the spirit of our minds, which in turn changes our hearts. And when God changes our heart, He's changed us. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. Talk about confession. What we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? And so the Bible talks a lot about our confession. Look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession or our confession. In other words, Jesus validates it. Amen. Jesus Christ. Think about, he says, in other words, when you're making your confessions, think about the high priest of your confession. Amen. Think about how he talked. What did he say? Amen. What did he believe? His faith, his words were absolutely perfectly in sync with his faith. What he said was exactly what he, because he said, I only say what my father says. Amen? Hebrews 10, verse 23. Praise the Lord. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Amen? Without wavering. In other words, let us keep our words consistent with our faith. 
so they are in sync. So we're not believing one thing and saying something else, right? For he is faithful that gave us the word, that promised, amen? Now, what does confession mean? It's obviously, confession means to say the same thing, right? In other words, if you get arrested for something and you confess, you're saying, yeah, I did that. That was me, right? Well, if you confess a crime, you're agreeing with the allegations of that. We confess the word of God because his word brings life. Praise the Lord. So when we speak in contradiction to God's word, what are we doing? Our words bring death. It's called corrupt communication. If you look up the word corruption, you'll find it's death. It's dying, right? So life-giving words are from the word of God, spirit and life. Amen. Corrupt communication or death consequences come from corrupt communication or words that are not alive, words that are not in sync with God's word. Proverbs 6 and 2, 6 and 2. Praise the Lord. You think, I know you're thinking, gosh, we hear this all the time. I know. And, and we're going to keep hearing it until it becomes the natural way for us to operate. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing and by hearing. We know this to be true, whether it's just regular uh, school, you know, learning from school. It was a lot of it was rote. A lot of it was just repetition, you know, and that's why we renew our minds to the word of God. We re re repetitiously go back to the word of God and read and confess what he has said to get us in sync so that our heads and our hearts are in tune. Amen. So that our hearts. Amen are abundantly filled with the word of God. So thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Praise the Lord. You're trapped, in other words, by the crap you say. You get yourself into, into situations because of words that we use. Amen? Now, if we don't use the word of God, we start letting our circumstances, our situations, replace our confessions of hope with declarations of despair. This always happens to me. You know, just when things are starting to go good. Then there's some virus or something. You know what I'm saying? So we got to put a watch on our tongue, David said. Because if we're not careful, the words that are coming out of our mouth can start to bring death to the promises of God and give place to the devil to destroy and rob from our lives. Praise the Lord. You're either given place for God or you're given place for the enemy. Hebrews 10 uh, verse 23 and 24. Thank you, Jesus. It's another reason why we're, we're so grateful to be able to have the technology for us to come together. Even though we can't physically be together, we can still be together spiritually and even intellectually for that matter. But he says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another... To provoke unto love and to good works. Again, that's why we, we want to come together in any way that we can. Because this is the only way we can provoke one another to believe and to confess what God is saying. And not what the world is saying. Because when we get separated and we're stuck with nothing but CNN or Fox News or whatever it might be. The local channels. All you're getting is a constant negative bombardment of how bad everything is. We need to come together together. And like this and through text messaging and Facebook and however you can connect with other believers to encourage them by encouraging them you encourage yourself amen so being around other people of like faith and then holding fast to the promises of God and declaring that to be true Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1 blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, he's not talking about somebody that had a beer or somebody that had a glass of wine or somebody that said something they shouldn't have said or got angry and got into an argument. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the counsel of the ungodly being contrary to the word of God. Just believing by the senses, only what you're, sen only what you're seeing, tasting, touching, smelling, amen. And stands in the way of scorners, or sinners, excuse me, and set in the seat of scornful. Those that are judging everybody else for believing God and, and being critical of it. So here's what he's saying. Surround yourself with people who won't pity you, but they'll challenge you to believe and speak in agreement. I don't want sympathy. If I got an issue, I want an answer. Amen. I'm not looking for somebody to pat me on the back and say, you poor thing. No, I'm wanting to, how's, what's the way out of this? How, how do I get past this thing, right? Amen. So Matthew chapter 12 
and verse 34. I know you thought I was that the message that comes, uh, you know, you, you read a scripture, you leave it and never come back. <laughs> I, I'm, honestly, I'm trying to come back. So, oh, generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. All right. Matthew 15, verses 18 and 19. So we know that the seed is what produces the harvest, right? So he says, oh, generation, uh, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. And they defile the man. It isn't what goes in, it's what comes out. So out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies, all of that stuff, right? So the nature, here's the deal, the nature of our seed lies in the abundance of our heart. Now, when our heart, or excuse me, when our words don't align with our faith that we profess in Jesus, who actually dwells inside of us, then we got a heart problem. Praise the Lord. We all say things. We all do things occasionally, and we know that, we, we, that are contrary, that are not in line, right? But the real question is, what is the abundance of your heart? Not just the one thing you say occasionally or what thing might slip up and you might think or say or do something. Our words are spiritual indicators of our heart condition. Amen. God is calling us to search out the root of the abundance, amen, of our hearts. And to claim absolute and total victory in every area of our lives. Praise the Lord, right? Because remember I said when, you're, when your heart or the, the words that you're speaking are contradicting the faith that you're sharing... You're not going to get to the victory. You're not going to get the total victory that you're after. When there's an inconsistency between your faith in Jesus and the words that you're saying, you're cut off from the victory. You're cut off from the promise, amen, that God has for us, amen? So God is calling us to search out the root of uh, the abundance of our heart, amen? So if we profess faith in Christ, and then our, if, if we're saying, I believe that I'm born again, that I am the righteousness of God in Christ, then my words ought to confirm that faith. They ought to confirm that belief. Right? Instead of saying, I believe I am the righteousness of God in Christ, but man, I'm going to get this virus. No, you're, not, you're contradicting your faith. You're, you're at odds with your faith. Praise the Lord. So we need to profess faith in Jesus, and then our words ought to confirm that faith. Our words are to justify the faith that we have in Christ. Praise the Lord. Think of it from God's perspective. Here we are on earth, professing to be His children. He says we are the righteousness of God. We are His offspring. We, are his, we, we, we receive an inheritance from Him as our Father, right? And at the same time, if our words are speaking nothing but defeat and fear, what is God thinking? Claiming to be my child, my offspring, my heir... And saying, oh my God, what a mess. How are we going to get out of this? This is not good. This is going to be bad. This is going to get really, really bad. God has called us to be a living testimony. By the words of our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, amen. So in other words, by faith in Jesus, ought to reveal, ought to be revealed, I should say, by the words that I speak. Not just that, hey, I'm born again. No, but I believe that God has healed me. I believe that God has prospered me. I believe that God will see me through this situation. Amen? God wants us to walk in victory. Amen? Not only for ourselves, but for His sake. How do we give glory to God? By believing in His Son. Amen? And confessing the truth of God's Word. That's how God is glorified. That's how people learn that God is something more than just another little G God. He is the God. Amen. The God of the universe. Amen. So that he wants to work out what is well-pleasing in his sight. Amen. How is that to dis discern? It's, it's according to his will, which was established before the foundation of the world. Amen. He's given us every weapon we need, everything that we have to have to claim victory in our lives. And also to fulfill the divine plan of God for the universe. Praise God. Two scriptures and we'll wrap up this morning. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 26. 
Praise the Lord. Hope you all getting something from this. Amen. Glory to God. Discipline. We talk about discipling. Discipline. The discipline is to discipline yourself to say what God says about the situation and not what everybody else is saying. Or not what the first thought that comes to your mind. Amen. I therefore so run. This is Paul saying. Not as uncertainly. So fight I. Not as one that beats the air. Amen. I, we're in a race. But we're not running. Amen. As if we don't know the, there's a finish line. We don't know how fast we got to go. We don't know how strong we have to keep. Amen. So we fight. We're, we're in a battle. We're in warfare with the enemy. But I'm not beating the air. I'm whipping the devil. When I use the word of God, I'm taking the sword of the spirit and I'm cutting his ears off just like Peter did in the garden, only this time with the approval. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why? Because it forces us to make a choice. Am I going to say what God says about this, or am I going to cower in fear and start confessing everything that everybody else is saying? You can't help yourself, and you sure can't help them if you're going to agree with their fear and their torment. Amen? While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. This is all temporary. I don't know how temporary, but it's temporary. It will end. It will, it will be done. Amen. But the things which are not seen are eternal. They don't change. What is that? Healing, deliverance, prosperity, salvation. Amen. Protection, provision. Amen. You can't see them, but they're yours. Amen. They belong to you. And you need to keep the focus on that and not on what the world is throwing at us. Amen. You all can do it. Praise the Lord. You know this thing. You know how to do it. You need to just believe. And the abundance, out of the abundance of the heart. In other words, the thing that's strongest in there is what will come out. And that's why you need to feed your spirit with the word of God. Amen. So that out of the abundance of the heart. Now, there's some stuff will come out of us every once in a while. It's not perfect. It's not true. It's not right. But it's the abundance of the heart that God is looking for. What do you really believe? Yes, in a moment of anger, in a moment of anxiety or whatever, you might say something or do something you don't really have to total agreement with you, just angry or frustrated or whatever, but out of the abundance of the, what's the abundance of your heart saying? I believe God. The bottom line is when no matter when push comes to shove, I'm going to trust God. Amen. That's the abundance of the heart that we're looking for. And that comes by keeping focused on his word and trusting in the promises that he has given us. And we're going to have victory in Jesus name. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God wherever you are. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Keep your words in line with your faith. And nothing will be impossible to you. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again next week. And hopefully we can all get back together by the 17th. Be praying, trusting God, and confessing his word in every situation in Jesus' name. God bless you.